In this video, we're going to learn a little more about forces and also about how to represent forces in a diagram called a force diagram or a free body diagram. We have already learned a couple of surprising things about forces, such as they're not necessary to keep an object moving. We saw with the bowling balls that the bowling balls frequently are just quite happy to be moving. You don't need to keep pushing to keep them moving. We also learn that when a force acts on an object, it doesn't result in motion, it results in acceleration. So what we also want to do is learn how to uh, represent those forces and also we're going to define forces a little bit more carefully. Here's a definition of a force. Force is a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. Forces are not things that objects have. They are not things that objects contain. Forces only exist when one object interacts with another object. That interaction is called a force. When the interaction stops, then there's no longer a force. Whenever there is an interaction between two objects, in the case of this picture, it's the guy's hand and the wood blocks, there's a force upon each of the objects. So here you can see his hand is breaking the blocks, but if you or I were to do this, the blocks would break our hands. So both the blocks and the hand experience a force. When this interaction ceases, when the hands are no longer in contact with the blocks, then the two objects no longer experience the force. And here's a really important thing. Forces only exist as a result of the interaction. His hand does not contain a force which he gives to the blocks. The force is an interaction between his hand and the block that lasts as long as his hand is in contact with the blocks. So the question now is, how can I represent forces on a diagram, which is called a free body diagram? So before I do that, I have to remember that, first of all, a force is a vector. And that means when I need some way to represent it that takes into account that the force has a magnitude. In other words, forces have different strengths. Magnitude is just a fancy word for number. And forces have a direction. And because they have a strength and they have a direction, that is why they are actually called vectors. So the device that we use to represent a force, something that can take into account representing magnitude and direction is we use an arrow. Now when the value of an arrow is, uh, it's easy to represent direction, so it's up and sideways. So direction is easy, and magnitude we can represent by how long we draw the arrow. So that's a really strong force, and that's a really weak force. So I can make the arrow point any direction I want at any length. So we are going to be representing forces with arrows because they are vectors. And a vector, a, a force diagram is one where we're going to draw objects and we represent the forces on the object by putting arrows representing those forces. So let's see how that works. So let's start with a simple one. We're going to start with a ball and we're going to have the ball falling in a vacuum, which simply means there's no air and so this ball is only going to be subject to one force which is gravity so the question is how to do a force diagram or a free body diagram for a ball falling uh, in a vacuum so I'm going to first of all draw an arrow and the arrow I am going to place so it comes from the center of the ball and point straight down because that's where the earth is which is the source of the gravity acting on the ball and then I have to make sure that I label the force so I'm gonna write F and I could either write gravity or I could abbreviate it grav so I've just labeled it so that's the force of gravity so that's the force diagram for a ball falling in a vacuum okay let's do something a little more complicated um, we've been playing around in class with something called an air puck 
which when you turn the fan on just kind of glides along the table like this. But what would the force diagram look like if I just left the air puck just sitting on the table? How would I draw that? Well, first of all, we would say, well, gravity is certainly acting on the air puck. Gravity is making the air puck sit on the table instead of floating away. So I would still definitely draw a vector for force representing gravity. And I would write F gravity here. But then I need to ask myself the question, is that the only force acting on the air puck? Well, is the air puck falling? No, it's not. The air puck is sitting on the table. It's not falling. So does that mean that the table is actually exerting a force on the air puck? Well, let's think about that. Whoa! What does this have to do with an air puck sitting on a table? Well, this is just a spider that's sitting on the water, but notice that the spider is not sinking into the water. In fact, I can see that the spider's legs are kind of pushing into the water surface in all these places keeping the spider from sinking. So that means that in these locations the water is supporting the spider. So although gravity would pull the spider down into the water, the water surface itself supporting the spider is pushing upward so that the spider is able to stay at the same level. Well now let's go back to the air pump. Okay, let's imagine this situation now. So I got two people and this person sees this air puck and they go, cool, it's an air puck, let's play. So they push the air puck and the air puck, because the fan is now on, just slides across the table. And this person says, cool, I'm going to push it back. And the air puck goes back this way. And then this person says, cool, I'm going to push back. And the air puck just goes this way. So the air puck is just kind of going back and forth. And it's just kind of going back and forth. Now let's imagine while we're watching this, we just, after this comes back like this, we just do a stop motion like that. And we say, okay, what forces, as the puck is moving back and forth, what are the forces that are moving, that are acting on it right now? Well, first of all, we might say, well, gravity is definitely still acting on it. So I'm going to put a vector that represents gravity. Gravity is still pulling down. So and I also have to remember to label it. So I'm going to write F grav. So gravity is still acting on it. Now, even though it's not touching the table because the fan is on, the puck is still supported by the air that's underneath the puck between the puck and the table. So the puck is still being supported. So there is still a normal force. So I'm going to put another force and put it right on here. And I'm going to call that the normal force. Now, here's the important question. The puck is on its way moving along the table here. So the question is, do I need to put another force over here from this person's push? What do you think? Well, if you remember from when we first talked about forces, that a force is an interaction between two objects, in this case, between her hand and the puck, and that when that interaction ceases, there's no more force. So she pushes on the puck as long as the puck is in contact with her, but as soon as she stops pushing on it, there is no more force from her acting on the puck. So there's no force over here. Same thing for this person. This person only exerts a force on the puck while they're in contact with the puck. So even though the puck is on its way moving this way, right at this instant of time, these are the only two forces. When the puck comes over here and hits her hand, then there's a force, and that's what makes it change direction. But now that force turns off, and it just goes across, and this is the force diagram. And then when it hits her hand, then there would be a force, but it comes back over this way. So right now, in the middle of the table, these are the only two forces. Okay, no more spiders. Back to the air puck sitting on the table. The air puck's fan is off, so the air puck is sitting directly on the table, motionless, and we're trying to consider whether gravity is the only force acting on it. So like we saw with the spider, 
the surface that the spider was sitting on, which was water, was actually supporting the spider. So the table is supporting the air puck. So actually there is contact between the air puck and the table, and so the table, in supporting the air puck, is actually exerting a force upwards, which cancels out the force of gravity, and therefore the puck just sits in place. So we can draw another force directed upwards that cancels out the force of gravity. So this force is actually called a normal force, which is a weird word. Normal is another word for perpendicular. So you can see that the normal force is perpendicular to the surface that's causing it. So that's why sometimes it's called the normal force. A better name for it would be the contact force, that the table is in contact with the puck therefore providing a counteracting force to gravity. So because this force, the normal force, and this force, gravity, are equal in magnitude, they're the same strength, the puck doesn't move up or down, the puck just sits there. Now what would happen if she pushed on the puck but the fan was off? So she pushes on the puck, but the fan's off, so there's no air to reduce friction, and the puck just eventually slows down and stops. So she pushes on the puck, and the puck moves, but eventually slows down and stops. So let's stop the puck's motion right here and just ask the question, what would the forces look like for that where the fan is off, and so there's friction? Okay, well, certainly gravity is still acting on the puck. So I'm still going to have a vector, force vector, representing gravity. So I'm going to have F grav. Um, certainly, there is now, especially because the fan is off, the table is what's supporting the puck. So there certainly is going to be a force upwards, which if you remember, we called that a normal force. But now, because the fan is off and the puck is slowing down, the puck is sliding against the table, and that friction makes the puck slow down. So, so now I'm going to also have another force, which is the force of friction that slows the puck down. If the puck is moving to the right, friction acts to the left because friction would slow it down. Friction impedes it. So I'm going to make this force, I'm going to label this the force of friction. So now I have three forces for a puck that's actually moving to the right. Gravity's trying to pull it down, table is supporting it, pushing up to cancel out gravity, and friction is slowing it down. There is no force in this direction because the puck, naturally because of its inertia, wants to just keep moving to the right.